Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-83. If you listened in last time, you heard the tale of Karina the Waif teaching Eddie, the crippled stable boy, how to deal with bullies. After a stunning victory over his tormentors, the boy was cleaned up and set about his daily chores. Karina returned to the inn, but was nearly run over by a group of five horsemen, each wearing gray cloaks. After discussing the fistfight with both Sister Elaine and Lady Irena, the two women were stunned at the revelation of the gray cloaks in town. The pair began to armor up and get a hold of the men in the room as the bewildered Karina did not understand the gravity of the situation. We rejoin them as Fargus struggles to put his armor on, and Bulger is as puzzled as Karina. Just get ready, yelled Fargus as he quickly got his armor on, put in the right spots. His hair was a mess and his eyes were bloodshot. Every word that came out of his mouth was brushed away by Lady Arena, who questioned the amount of alcohol he had consumed the previous night. Not really a good time to ask, mage. Where in the Hades is Cain? The women shrugged their shoulders as they appeared to be ready to descend into a dungeon. The group retraced their steps, and it was Sister Elaine that pointed out that their half-elven compatriot had been getting quite chummy with the watch commander. Fargus stomped around, angrily hoping that he was not at the guard station. He ordered everyone downstairs, but Bulger crossed his arms. Looking scarcely better than the ranger, the former sailor demanded an explanation. An exasperated Fargus rubbed his temples as Lady Irena and Sister Elaine both gave a quick synopsis of who the Grey Cloaks were and how their sudden appearance just happens to coincide with the party's arrival in Tunis, along with a wanted poster. Fargus was clearly concerned about the well-being of the bard, and Riley asked if the gnome uh, has had his curiosity satisfied. He shrugged and hoisted his weapon. Let's go deal with them Grey Cloaks. No, 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 no countered Sister Elaine. We need to act normally in the event that the riders are not here for us. I would say we remain casual in the event that they are just passing through. The group showed signs of disapproval but grunted their reluctant acceptance of the plan. They mused that it was possibly just a coincidence and everything was fine. As they reached the front door of the inn, hopes for peace were dashed. A half-dressed Cabe Silvertongue and Tressa Norink had been dragged into the street by the gray cloaks. The bard had signs of being punched and lay in the dirt surrounded by three men while two others remained on their horses that they rode in on. Horseshit, exclaimed Fargus as he drew his blade but was stopped by Bulger. No, 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 not just yet. <coughs> I have an idea, as Bulger coughed and grabbed an empty wine bottle from a nearby table. He then pulled Karina closer. He nodded for Fargus to go across the far side of the street and have the ladies dive in between the buildings on the opposite side of Fargus, telling them to wait for a signal. The trio looked at him skeptically, but he quickly pointed out that it would work. The three did as they were told and dove out of sight as the former sailor and waif walked down the middle of the street. Follow my lead, lassie, muttered the gnome. As the pair approached the disturbing scene, it was clearly evident that both Cabe and Tressa had been caught off guard, and each had attempted to fight, albeit unsuccessfully, against the other men. Yeah! Kill that half-breed! yelled out Bulger, causing the assembled group to look at him. Their kind doesn't mix with our kind. Put him to the sword, and her too for treating him like an equal. As the duo approached the guard building, they noticed several guards locked in a cell looking out the window. The leader of the Grey Cloak stopped the pummeling of the bard long enough to yell back at the gnome. Their kind? Bold words, squad fellow. Perhaps you should run along to your mommy and take that adorable beard. You're missing about three feet of meat to tell me my job. Giving Karina a slight shove, she continued forward but eased up alongside one of the mounted men 
as Bulger approached their boisterous leader. Three feet, huh? <laughs> well, my friend, that is quite rude of you to say. Apparently, you don't understand the usefulness of being this size. The Great Cloaks laughed at the gnome's bravado, and the leader put his hands on his hips and asked Bulger to explain it to him. The gnome shrugged his shoulders and looked at Karina, who stepped closer to the horse and was getting ignored by the rider. Bulger doubled over in laughter, causing the group of warriors to become perplexed. When the sailor looked back up and said, Laddie, it puts you at my height. Bulger summarily punched the man in the unprotected groin, causing him to double over in pain and fall to the ground. Karina jabbed the horse in its flank, causing it to buck. The resulting action caused its rider to be thrown, and a kick to the other horseman in the face with the rising hooves. Fargus stepped in from behind the man holding Tressa and clubbed him upside the head. Bulger did the same with his, leaving only one gray cloak who began to back up, but found himself staring at the mage and cleric. Looking around quickly, the man raised his hands and was quickly disarmed by the ladies. The watch commander ran inside and released her cohorts who quickly took the gray cloaks into custody. A missive pertaining to the apprehension of the adventurers was found on the leader's person. It was given over to Tressa and then to Fargus. A barely dressed Tressa pointed out that this turn of events was clearly going to be a problem for the party as well as for Tunis. Cabe and Tressa returned to her room and became attired appropriately and met the party at the tavern to discuss options. While sitting in the feathered pig, the watch commander explained that she and her men were woefully equipped to deal with such an onslaught of gray cloaks and they couldn't very well kill them. Her opinion was to give the party a head start and release the men a few hours later. If we keep them, their associates will come for them and that could spell trouble for the city. The group nodded in agreement that the problematic situation that they had put Tunis in, but still did not like knowing that the men would be in close pursuit of them, or perhaps mad enough to burn the city down as a warning. Does anyone really not like these guys? inquired Karina. Elves, uh, miners, uh, the Duke of Most Cry. Uh, aside from them, these guys are the law in the wilderness. They play by their own rules said the elven mage. The waif poised the question if the men could be turned over to any one of these groups. The group considered it for a moment, but each shook their head. Cape pointed out that the miners would kill them, the elves may ignore the request and let them go, and most cry was several hundred miles away. If we had a teleport spell we could do it. The group sighed as no answer appeared feasible until Karina burst into laughter until tears rolled down her eyes. The bewildered group felt that the poor woman had gone into utter madness until she stopped laughing and exposed a huge smile. I think I have a perfect idea, she said. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.